My name is Sarah Lee Hindi. I work as Community Development Officer at Halibut First Nation. The first program I'd like to speak a little bit about is the Outdoor Education Program. Um, the Outdoor Education Program is offered to Grade 5 students in the western region of the Newfoundland Labrador English School District. So during this program, Grade 5 students are invited to Grossmoor National Park um, at a location called Kill Double Camp and Conference Centre, uh, where they learn subject matter material but in a very unique way because for the duration of their learning at Kill Devil Camp and Conference Center in Gross Morn, um, they are outdoors. So it's a unique experience for students to have land-based learning um, and outdoor education in this beautiful location where they can be immersed in the great outdoors and still um, get curriculum outcomes that they would normally be delivered in a classroom environment, but in this beautiful outdoor space. And the benefits of having children immersed in the outdoor environment for their education um, has so many different benefits to them. Um, the first thing is that they learn education uh, in a really special and unique way through hands-on experiential learning. Um, they are learning not only um, from the content that's being delivered, but they're actually learning from the setting and the environment that they're immersed in because Mother Earth is one of the greatest teachers. Um, and so by just being immersed in that environment, they're drawing all kinds of connections between um, the subject matter that's being delivered by the teachers and the environment itself. Um, another really important component of that program is a socialization aspect. So kids are given the opportunity to learn and laugh and play and interact with each other um, in an unplugged outdoor setting. Uh, and that's so good for their self-esteem, their interaction, cooperation, um, and socialization in general. So there's more than just book learning that takes place. It's the hands-on socialization, cooperation, collaborative learning that can occur in that outdoor setting. Connection to land is a really important and valuable um, thing that comes out of the outdoor education program as well. Um, children, when they're immersed in the outdoors, they you can you can quickly see how they are connecting with that space and respecting that outdoor space. Um, so they are very cautious over the wildlife and the plant life and, and everything in that space and the way that they are learning, interacting with it, within that environment is just so beautiful because um, in an indoor environment, um, those interactions do not take place. But in this outdoor setting, uh, the learning comes together. So things that are... Um, subject matter base come together with the environment in which kids are immersed in. Uh, and so it draws lots of connections between real world, the environment that we are codependent on uh, and interactive with, with um, studies that naturally would occur um, in the classroom environment. So it all kind of draws this um, the, the life of the child and the learning of the child together in a really beautiful way. There are a lot of activities that take place at Kill Devil um, during the outdoor education program. Um, there are subject-based lessons that occur, so English language arts and social studies and science and physical education. Um, all of the core uh, subject matter um, is delivered through very um, unique and diverse lessons. Um, but in addition to that, the program is infused with indigenous uh, worldview, knowledge, uh, cultural practices, and, and, and traditions. So children participate in um, learning that furthers their understanding and knowledge of the history and cultural traditions that are rooted in this land and the Mi'kmaq people um, that inhabit this land. A, a large portion of our population here um, is of Mi'kmaq ancestry, uh, has Mi'kmaq ancestry and is of Mi'kmaq descent. So uh, for students to connect with that heritage and that history um, that is so rich and vibrant in this area, that's really valuable. And so one of the ways in which which we provide that opportunity is through a lesson, a cultural lesson that we teach the kids. And it is a Mi'kmaq lesson focused on the oral stories, the history, the traditions, and the cultural practices and teachings of our people. Language is one element of that lesson, uh, as well as uh, history, oral traditions, 
uh, cultural practices. We drum and we sing Mi'kmaq songs at camp and we uh, include all the children in that. And so we invite them to sing along with us and come up and help us with the drumming. We also um, have a sharing circle among all the students that come to the outdoor education program so that they can share something about themselves and we can um, have a really um, beautiful connection to each and every child there and get, get to know a little bit more about them on a personal level. There are many ways in which we measure the success of the program. We do have the um, follow-up evaluations that are done by anyone who has participated in the program, such as teachers, chaperones, uh, people that are involved in the organization and coordination of the program. However, I think the greatest measure of our success is actually in the messages that the children leave us. And we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of messages that we have collected. I wish I had brought some here today to share with you. But we have hundreds of messages that we have collected uh, from children that have left um, just a little, a few lines about what camp brought to their lives and why it was special to them. Um, it's incredible, the feedback that children give us. We just know that by the smiles on their faces and the changes and the wonderful things that we see happening at camp, that although it is only a two and a half day program that kids participate in, we do really feel from those messages that it will have lasting uh, effects on the way that they view Mother Earth, the way that they are now building this um, connection with each other, with the, the history uh, of this place. Um, and, and so, yeah, their words are our measure of success. Absolutely, there are challenges in, in trying to coordinate and deliver a program of this caliber. Um, as I said previously, it is a program that is offered to all grade five students in the western region of the Newfoundland and Labrador English School District. Um, and so we see hundreds of students in the fall season and hundreds of students in the spring season of this program. We offer it, we offer it twice every year uh, so that we are able to um, give all grade five students the opportunity to participate in this. And so with a program of that caliber, there comes challenges in terms of communications and um, logistics, but we have a very strong partnership that makes this program possible and makes this program run quite smoothly given the, the large uh, program that it is. And so I should mention that this program is a function of a partnership that exists between the Newfoundland and Labrador English School District, the Halibut First Nation, Parks Canada, and Kill Devil Camp and Conference Center. Um, so all of us together have built a really strong um, partnership and relationship to make this program possible and to make this program not just possible, but also grow uh, and become, um, I think, greater in its offering to our students. To me, Indigenous education is providing children with the opportunity to understand, to understand each other, to understand um, our the history and the stories and the traditions of the indigenous people of this place as well as um, to draw a connection between their own personal life and the content that they are receiving through their public education. So our students actually um, attend schools within the Newfoundland Labrador English School District. And so within that school system it is really valuable and vital for students to be able to draw a connection to who they are with what content they are learning. And so Indigenous education is really providing ways in which children can draw that connection. I think it's valuable to be able to connect their communities and the, the, the things that shape them as humans with the school community because too often there's a disconnect between the two. And I think Indigenous education, for me, is providing an opportunity for our Mi'kmaq students to have that connection built, provide opportunities to build that connection, and for them, in turn, to have a better understanding of themselves and grow as, as people. I think it's really important that we start on the path to language revitalization here, and we have started on the path to language revitalization, but continuing that journey, um, because within a language, comes a set of values. Um, and unfortunately, we do not have a strong base of um, Mi'kmaq language speakers here in Newfoundland Labrador. And so by providing opportunities to 
create a revitalization for our students, for our younger generation, to be able to bring back that language. Um, and to ha I have two children, a two-year-old and a four-year-old. And to me, the opportunity for them to be able to speak Mi'kmaq and having the opportunity built into the education that they receive is just something that I'm so passionate about and I think is so vital to their education. So language is one piece of that and it is connected to cultural revitalization as well. So when we speak about language revitalization, we're also speaking about cultural re revitalization. And so there are, all, there are many different aspects of cultural revitalization that come in with that as well. So the traditions, the oral stories, the histories of our Mi'kmaq people in this area uh, are all vital to that. I would love to see um, there be more of an opportunity for us to um, be able to provide an Indigenous lens on uh, what is, you know, what is the education system that largely stems from a Eurocentric perspective um, and that does not currently really encapsulate um, the Indigenous perspective, but providing opportunities for that perspective and that lens to be uh, available to students and to connect with. Um, I think that in five or ten years from now, as I mentioned previously, there will be more opportunities for language learning. Um, students will have access to opportunities within their school system to receive some measure of language learning in the Mi'kmaq language. I would love to also see um, more of a concerted effort among all invested parties in Indigenous education and education of our students that attend our um, public schools to be able to come together and really look at uh, truth and reconciliation and the need for um, Indigenous education and work together to make their, um, their focus one that um, is reflective of the need of our Indigenous population. One might think if you're learning entirely in an outdoor setting and you're traveling like large distances in, throughout the course of a day to like go through the trails and, and learn different um, lessons throughout, throughout that program, there may be limitations. But I think the thing that sticks with me most um, as a story about the outdoor education program is that barriers are actually broken down there. Um, there are opportunities for every single child to learn in that setting and really grow and have a wonderful positive experience. Um, this past year, we had a child attend the program um, that was in a wheelchair. And so mobility was, of course, a concern as well as accessibility to the facilities there. And we, we did the necessary work to make sure um, that this child had a wonderful experience. And she came to camp and was able to get through all of the trails and learn all of the lessons. And the power of seeing the students come together to ensure that every single child, including this little girl in the wheelchair, had the most wonderful experience was magical and I could never replicate I could never replicate that because just the power of, of seeing them work together and making sure that everyone um, had such a wonderful experience out of that is just yeah I can't I can't explain it because you would have to have gone there and witnessed it yourself to really understand the gravity of it one of our lessons is called estuary and it's when children um, go down to um, Lomond, and it's a, a place where the salt and fresh water meet, uh, and so it's a really unique habitat uh, for living organisms, and so we wait until low tide, and we have the children go down and explore the low tide um, the creatures that live there and their habitats, and we make sure that they're cautious over how they look at the different living things and how they put them back in place and make sure that nothing is being disturbed, but it's a really neat activity, and this child, um, the one that I've been speaking about earlier in the wheelchair, her, um, her, her peers helped her in her wheelchair out through the low tide um, 
it's very mucky. It's almost like like it's a very difficult <laughs> terrain to get through. It's very muddy. I don't know if you can remember, Joni, your rubber boots getting stuck in it. And so they wheeled her out and made sure that they were collecting not just for themselves the different things that were there, the shells and the and the snails and the crabs, but for her. And then they had that wonderful experience together and then wheeled her back into shore and... Uh, it was beautiful to watch. Another program that we partner with, I should mention it because it goes hand in hand with the outdoor education program, is a school outreach program. It's Indigenous school outreach um, that is a combination of going into the schools but also bringing the children out of the schools. And it's a cultural programming that consists of um, oral stories and history teachings as well as a sharing circle, rattle making, traditional singing and drumming of Mi'kmaq songs as well. And it is a collaboration between the Newfoundland Labrador English School District and Halibut First Nation as well as community groups that are very culturally active. So we incorporate um, um, whichever community groups are able and willing to participate in this program with us as well as knowledge keepers and elders to bring cultural practices and traditions and history into classrooms. Um, but then at the end of it, it culminates in what we call mini powwow events where we bring the children out of their classroom setting into a, a larger location where they can all gather um, and celebrate um, the things that they have learned and and build on that with uh, more teachings from um, elders and knowledge keepers and dancers and drummers from our communities in this wonderful event. Um, and so children, as a follow-up to their Kill Devil experience in, if they have attended in the fall, they will get to participate in this mini powwow event and the school outreach. Most of the schools, not all of the schools, but most of the schools in the Cornbrook area would get to participate in that as well.